WYPJMYWLAS.com. You're tuned into the best music on the radio here, WYPJ and my WLAS.com. This is the Morning Juice. I'm TD Arnold along with Emmy Perry, and we are about to talk to you about that governor that has done something pretty good, but it's a pretty bad situation that they're involved in with this whole legislation on this gay, um, not allowing gays to be served in businesses. I mean, this is yeah, crazy. we talked about it last week, TD. I, we did, right? I, yeah, yeah. I, and I still can't believe it. I can't believe we're in 2014. Right. <laughs> right. Having a conversation about this. Yeah, I know. It, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, basically, we're, we're picking up kind of on where we left off, essentially. The Arizona governor, uh, we talked about her, Jan Brewer. She actually has vetoed the religious liberty bill, which we discussed earlier, which basically means that if she had passed it, the state legislator, it would have allowed businesses to deny service to lesbian and gay customers based solely on religious grounds. But she's vetoed this bill. Um, the reason why we're still talking about it, it's good to kind of go back, look at what happened with it. But it's really serving as a cautionary tale for other states as well that are having similar bills being brought to the table. Mm, mm, mm. So <laughs> I think it's going to open up a Pandora's box. I think it has right. opened up a Pandora's box because right now it is the issue of what's going to be discussed. Religion versus your own, I guess, personal views. Right. Or, or it's just a discrimination. Is it really discrimination or is it personal view? I mean, or is it religious? Um, your own discrimination? Or is it a combination of both? Is your religion actually discriminatory? I mean, I think that the jury is still out. I, some people still feel very strongly about this on both sides of the argument. I know that we looked at um, CNN.com did a vote on this issue online to see how people felt about the about that religious right. freedom discrimination argument. 78% of people felt that discrimination is what's being discussed here. It's not about religious freedom. 22% of people really believe that religious freedom was important and you should be able to discriminate on the basis of your religious, you know, faith, etc. So people are feeling strongly about it and it's not going to go away anytime soon. Well, I said on the morning show before that what you decide to do in your house is one thing. You can mm -hmm. not let me in your house because that is your choice. But when you open up a business to serve the public, mm -hmm. like a restaurant or something, you're opening up a business to say that I want everyone to be served. Right. You can't be discriminatory by saying, I, I want everyone to be served except for you, 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 and you. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go that, then just don't open up a business. Just invite a few friends over for dinner. Right. The people that you want. But yeah. now you've opened it up. Once you open up that business, you open it up to everyone. And so that's the thing that I believe that this is where the problem lies. People need to really consider what this is really saying in our society today. We have a society that is becoming more and more discriminatory. And I think we've seen more of it coming after President Obama was elected. We see yeah. it coming more to the surface. People are showing themselves more and more their true feelings of how they feel about the situation. They, I mean, I'm hearing people come up to me saying, Obamacare just ruined this country. I'm like, well, it was right. before Obamacare was even passed. <laughs> we re It was just a discussion. Mm -hmm. And they're saying it ruined the country. We got more. We're going to talk more about that when we come back after some music. We're going to have some more conversation on this in just a few moments. You're tuned into WYPJ and my WLAS.com. This is The Morning Juice with T.D. Arnold and Amy Perry. We are back and we are going to continue this conversation. Discrimination or is it really religious views? Do people have the right to say my religious views causes me to be prejudiced against you? And so because God has told me to not like you or to to say I can't serve you in according to whatever my religious view is, then you cannot come into my place of business or establishment. You can't be a part of my Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, or you cannot come in my mall. You cannot be served in any kind of capacity. Now, doesn't that sound very similar to the 60s, the 50s? Now we're in a situation because someone can even say 
to us. It's not just an issue with the gay issue anymore because what is happening is it can throw us back 60 years again. That's where we are. It's an argument for 60 years ago because that's what we were arguing this same exact point. And I can't believe that in our society, we can still do that. It's not even an issue where the person has, if you don't like black people, if you don't have to like me because I'm black, you don't have to invite me in your home because I'm black. But the issue of the civil rights movement and fair treatment and people coming into places of establishment where you've opened up the business for us to be served was another issue. I don't have to come in your church, but you've opened up a business for me to come in so I can get a sandwich or I can use the bathroom. These are just human, you know, dignity. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is with these laws is that, like you said, they're growing in number and they're popping up in all sorts of different ways and slightly different variations around the country. So, for example, a local lawmaker has introduced what he calls the Georgia Student Religious Liberties Act of 2014. That's very close to home for us here in South Carolina. And that legislation would provide for what he's termed as religious expression in class assignments. So it would allow local school systems to provide students with the freedom to organize religious groups and activities and would allow for voluntary student-led prayer to take place before school, during announcements, athletic events, graduation ceremonies, and so on. And on first glance, it may look pretty benign. Eh? There's no big deal about that. Schools, some schools practice, you know, some religious practice about that anyway, and some schools choose not to, and parents can choose whether they, what school they send their child to and so on. But this is different. This is putting it into law. This is saying that, you know, they have more rights to do this. And you can imagine if it becomes an issue where people use these laws to almost intimidate and silence students who may not believe in the same religious beliefs as other students and may not want to be subjected to those religious beliefs during their educational hours. So if I'm a, and I'm not, if I'm an atheist or say if I'm Muslim, you're saying that they can infringe their belief on what my child... Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's more a case if they're able to use their religious beliefs in the educational setting. I know there was a discussion a few months back about a young man who wasn't allowed to do his speech because it was too religious in the school assembly. It's about those type of things. It's about saying if a student wants to use their religion as a reference point, use prayer as a reference point, if teachers want to use it, if the school administrators want to bring in more religious practices throughout the school day, they are able to do so. It's no longer a place where people are supposed to use their, have their beliefs as individual practices. It's about the fact that people can bring it into the public forum and almost subject everybody to whatever beliefs the administrators or the other students feel they want to bring out. You know, it could be nothing, it could, but it could be something depending on how it's used. Well, we got to keep more on that. We got to watch these types of situations. Keep a close eye. And that's what we're going to keep doing here at The Morning Juice. Keeping a close eye on these types of subjects because, believe you me, it's going to come more alive. You're listening to the best music on radio here at WYPJ and my WLAS.com. This is The Morning Juice with Emmy Perry and T.D. Arnold. You're listening to the best music here on radio at WYPJ. I'm T.D. Arn along with Emmy Perry. This is The Morning Juice, and we want to thank you for making us a part of your morning listening pleasure. And we have supposed to be a home remedy. It is a home remedy of sorts. I don't know if you watch any of the reality shows on TV at the moment, but there's one called Hillbilly Blood. Never you know it? N- never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> we believe it. We believe Well, one of the stars of that particular show, a guy called Eugene Runkers, has talked about the fact that he goes to very great lengths to get rid of his itchy feet. Mm. And to do that, he sticks his feet in cow pipe. Cow poop. <laughs> cow poop. Yes. 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 Sounds gross, is gross. He said he does that because the cow dung contains ammonia, which is a natural microbial agent, and it's used in all sorts of remedies to cure all sorts of ills and has been for many, many years. Mm. He was skeptical at first, but he does it, and apparently it works pretty well. Well, I can say one thing. This guy will never, ever have a problem, not only with whatever his itch is, he won't have friends. <laughs> because it's crazy. I, that, mean, I mean that is pretty that's just nasty <laughs> I don't care who does that I mean that just put your foot in cow yeah that's nasty I'm sorry I don't does he have a woman is he a, <laughs> well, I, maybe you should get with the woman that called the police or something that, that's sick well <laughs> I have 
have to admit, I don't watch the show, so I don't know what his situation is family-wise. But, you know, let's not forget that home remedies and self-remedies and do-it-yourself remedies have always been around, and some of them work pretty good. I mean, I just picked up a copy of this month's Ebony magazine, and they have a whole article on kitchen home remedies, and some of them are pretty surprising. But I can't see somebody putting their foot in that stuff in no, cow manure. Not in this uh, ebony article either. Mm-mm, I, no, I don't. I can't see anybody in ebony putting their foot in cow manure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you uh, you name one person, any star or any personality, they have never put their foot or a hand anywhere. I don't like to smell cow manure. And I know it's good for fertilizer and stuff like that. I understand. That's one thing. It's going in the ground, but it's not going on my feet. <laughs> yeah, not that, me either. No, mm-hmm. that's uh, no. this guy. I he's a hillbilly. I don't really know too many hillbillies, but I won't be smelling that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. Anyway, that's enough nasty, smelly conversation for a day. <laughs> We got more music coming up at you here at WYBJ and my WLAS.com where you hear the best smelly music on radio. We're back here at WYPJ and my WLAS.com where you hear the best music on radio. Here at the Morning Juice, I'm T.D. Arnold along with Emmy Perry. And we're going to talk about this whole issue now, Emmy. And I've been dying to ask you this. You've been in the music industry for a while. You've been doing journalism. What is it that you, since you're kind of having this connection with the UK and the US, what is it that you find that is in your experience, the connection between the UK music, as far as black music and some of the black music that's coming out of the UK? Is one influence in the other or are we somewhat connected? Well, we're definitely connected. I mean, that, that's definitely the case, primarily because the US is so dominant by the media all the kind of older periods of music, 50s, 60s, 70s, have obviously made their way across to Europe and onto the UK. So we have that influence there with our R&B as well as that you guys have there. What we don't have that's similar in the in the uh, UK is perhaps the prevalence of the gospel element of R&B. Many US R&B artists come by the church, by the gospel school right. of singing, if that makes sense. We're not quite as deep into that in the UK as we are in the US, so that's obviously very different. And also in the UK, we have a different way of categorizing music as R&B. It tends to be here very much based on race, whereas in the UK, it's very much based on the music. It doesn't really matter what the race of the person is. Mm. That's interesting. So it explains why someone like a, a Josh Stone, she sounds so soulful, and yet, you know, you would not know that she's white or black or whatever. Right. I mean, we have Josh Stone, Adele as well. Adele. Incredible, you know, crosses that boundary, crosses those different genres. There's a lot of different artists. I mean, I know that Emily Sande is doing really well in the U.S. Uh, right yes, now. she I'm is. British artist. She's fantastic. She actually is an artist of a friend of mine, actually, is her A&R manager. So that's, she, I've watched her, you know, really take off out here and do really, really great, great stuff. But really, the U.K. and the U.S., you know, we're quite different. I think the U.K. has perhaps slightly more leeway to be a little less genre-specific and have a wider set of influences from a wider types of genres than perhaps American R&B has. It's, I think, a little more specific here in the, in the U.S. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing that I, I have noticed when I travel over to Europe or even into Canada. There's, there seems to be just, it's not as specific as it would be here. It's really almost like music and when you travel to Europe rather than saying a specific type of music. And that's one of the things that I did notice. One of the groups that I remember years ago when I first got contact with some of the European artists, I don't know if you remember, you probably do, Truce. You remember that? Yeah. And yeah, they were big and yeah. over there. And I was and trying to make the transition to the U.S. market and it just somehow died. It just didn't happen. And I don't know whatever happened with Truce. I don't, whatever happened to them? I'm not only sure what happened to them, but there has been a few people that have come through and, and done pretty well since then. I mean, obviously, Estelle is quite soulful right. as far as we're concerned in the UK. I know she probably isn't traditional R&B completely over here, but certainly we consider her as soulful. But she, we knew her as a rapper first, which the Americans don't really know. Really? Um, 
Didn't know so that. she was a rapper for many years before she really went into this whole singing thing when she left for the US. Wow. It's amazing how music conversation.